Welcome to Unshakable Grace, where faith meets everyday life. I'm Pastor Mark Carlson of Emmanuel Lutheran Church of Kettering, Ohio. I'm thrilled to embark on this journey of inspiration, growth, and unwavering faith with you. Join us as we explore the boundless depths of God's grace that sustains us through our trials, empowers us in our successes, and transforms our hearts. Each episode, we'll dive into biblical insights, real life stories, and practical wisdom that remind us of the unshakable foundation we have in Christ. So tune in, open your heart, and let's experience the unshakable grace that shapes our lives. It's time to dive in. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I bid you a good day as we're getting started with this unshakable grace. Again, remembering who we are as the baptized, blood-bought, bound for heaven sons and daughters. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This next Sunday's Pentecost Sunday, a festival Sunday in the church year. And as such, the typical text is going to be the account of the day of Pentecost as recorded in Acts chapter 2. I'm not going to read the first several verses there. I'm just going to jump right in here with the 14th verse and what follows as Peter is quoting the prophet Joel stating, as it does there in Acts chapter 2, But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day, nine o'clock in the morning. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show wonders in the heaven above, and, on, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So as we think about the question as to whether God is still speaking today, let me highlight the 17th verse as again we read, and in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. God's new covenant. The New Testament is where the Spirit of the living God, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ is how it's referenced as well. The Holy Spirit is going to be functioning differently than in the Old Testament according to the Old Covenant, whereas the Spirit of God was with only select individuals at select times for select purposes. Now, the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, is going to be on and in and working through all of God's children, all sons and daughters of the Lord. Now, this is not to say there is no office of the Holy Ministry and that there is no need for pastors to be involved in the foretelling of God's word. No, we're, we're needing pastors to be 
forth tellers making note again that prophecy is not simply foretelling, but it is the forth telling of God's word. And the forth telling can happen, as it says here, in the last days as God pours out his spirit on all flesh through your sons and your daughters. Please note that all Christians are involved with this prophetic element of the Word of God, the foretelling, being able to share God's Word, to know God's Word, to be a worker approved, not ashamed, to rightly handle the Word of God, to be able to share it with others. That's a very important part of prophecy, the foretelling of the Word of God. Now, is God still speaking today, still desirous of speaking through visions and through dreams? As it goes on to say, your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Now, I think a clear and simple distinction can be made between visions and dreams. What is the clean and clear distinction? When I am awake, God can bring a vision. When I am asleep, God can bring a dream. We see the distinction made in Holy Scripture between visions happening while people are awake and dreams happening while they are asleep. Now, we're not going to go now into all of the Old Testament and New Testament visions, but we will soon as we go into a new visions, visions, visions expression. And you'll hear me talking for weeks through June, July, and August about visions, the Old Testament visions and the New Testament ones. And I am struck with the thought that as God has given his mission, the Missio Dei, the mission of God, not only has he given the mission by telling us, he is in visions detailing how it's all going to unfold and what God is going to be doing from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation. The mission of God has the vision of God attached to it. And I'm excited to be digging into texts of Holy Scripture that tie in the mission and the vision. No, here we have in Acts chapter 2 verse 17 a strong encouragement for us to consider that God does continue to speak to his people. He wills through the written word of God. And that's the litmus test all the time that we know the Holy Scriptures as God's forth telling for his people. We see him speaking. I'm struck with what I heard and what we know is the practice, practice amongst our, our uh, fellow Christians. I would count the friends and the Quakers among us as felt, but they do have some differing ideas on spirit baptisms and spirit communion through baptism in to Christ by faith. There's no need for water baptism, as I understand it. No need for the Lord's Supper because we're all in Christ participating in some communal manner. I don't agree with these teachings. I think the means of grace and the sacraments of holy baptism and holy communion are for all Christians, visible means, commanded by God with the word and promise attached to it and the forgiveness of sins and life and salvation that they bring. And it is an action and a work of God that he's doing. That's how we define a sacrament. We also have the means of grace, which is the word of God preached, 
the Word of God sung, the Word of God uh, taught, the, the Word of God read, uh, even the Word of God prayed as you put the Holy Scriptures into prayer. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of Christ. The Holy Spirit's going to be working. Where the Holy Spirit is working, there is the Word of God going forth. All Scripture is God breathed, Second Timothy chapter 3. And the Spirit of God in the prophets of old was working. They did search intently. Luke, the physician, searched intently. But the inerrant, infallible, inspired Word of God is the result of the Holy Spirit moving. Now, did the Holy Spirit take over those folks? No. This is a, an occultic practice of automatic writing. That's not how the Holy Spirit works. Holy Spirit's a gentleman. The Holy Spirit, as I use that phrase, is, is a gentleman. I'm saying gentle, respectful, not taking over someone and causing them to automatically start writing. So we see that as an occultic practice in which they wake up and realize, oh, I wrote in a language I didn't even know. That's demonic. That's an occultic practice. But when God's moving in people and the Holy Spirit is moving, there is a partnership. I can pray in the Spirit. I can pray with my mind also. I can sing in the Spirit. I can sing with my mind also, as Paul says in 1 Corinthians 14. So, is God desirous of continuing to speak to us through his word, the prophetic scriptures? Yes. So, we hear his, but does God bring visions yet today and dreams? We would certainly think that God during our waking moments wants to bring to us on occasion and we test them we test them all by holy scripture those visions that we may have so you shut your eyes perhaps and you might in your mind's eye see some element of what god might be communicating test it test it on the basis of scriptures let's say you dream and as you're dreaming, I always say, commit your dreams to the Lord. In my personal reading just today, I was in the Psalms, chapters 3 and uh, Psalm 3 and Psalm 4, which talk about lying down and resting and sleeping well. When we are lying down and resting, I always say, commit your dreams to God. Tell the evil one and any demonic spirits that may be attempting to attack you, to oppress you, be gone in the name and blood and victory of Jesus as you lay your head to rest. Speak, speak, overcome by the word of your testimony and the blood of the Lamb. Bind, resist, rebuke, and send fleeing any oppressive spirits. And then simply say, Lord, as I sleep, Please bring me restful sleep to rest and sleep in you and speak to my heart. Help me to have dreams of you. Awaken me with a song on my heart or a scripture to start my day. And I will tell you, I have had visions and dreams that God has brought to me, but I test them on the basis of Holy Scripture. Where the Holy Spirit is working, there will be faith. Where the Holy Spirit is working, there will be the Word. Where the Holy Spirit is working, there is the witnessing the Spirit does on several levels. So if you were to go into the Gospel text for this Sunday, for the day of Pentecost, you would go into the Gospel of John, and you would find in John chapter 15, verse 25 and 26, some words, and chapter 16, verses 4 through 15, some words about the Spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit at work. And such a strong emphasis on the Holy Spirit bearing witness to Jesus and bringing a conviction to us of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment 
the Holy Spirit always pointing to Jesus. So the prophecy, the proclama proclamations, the foretelling, the pointing to Jesus that the Holy Spirit is doing, empowering us for witness, giving us the words to speak as witnesses, even to the point of death, because martyrion, the Greek word for witness, is the word from which we get martyr, people willing to die for the faith, willing to die for Jesus. I've often said, we've got to give people something they're willing to die for if they're going to live for it. Are you going to die for something? Yes, if you're living for it. So we offer ourselves and we surrender ourselves. We make the confession, I will not fall away even to the point of death and I live my life as a witness for Jesus Christ. And the same Holy Spirit that's bearing witness with our spirits that we're the children of God moves in us to pray and praise and proclaim and to prophesy. And as the Holy Spirit is moving in these ways, moving us to be those ones who bring prophecies and the messages that may come to us in visions and dreams, rest assured the Holy Spirit's going to keep moving and working until our last breath until our last day and then the Holy Spirit does the next work promised in Scripture the same Spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead will quicken our mortal bodies one day and the resurrection of the body I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Christian Church the communion of Saints the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting pray with me dear Lord thank you that we are with the Holy Spirit. Who else would we want to convict us of sin and of righteousness and judgment and then point us to the Savior who provides us the forgiveness and life and salvation through his suffering and death and resurrection? Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the work you keep doing in us. And thank you, Lord Jesus and Heavenly Father, that you are ever having the Spirit proceed from you as you also are with the Spirit, making our hearts your home. We pray all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. And the peace of God that passes all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Join us again for another unshakable grace.